know, there's been commentary in the past around becoming the operating system for commercial industries. You've talked about airline industry, maybe just talked about healthcare for a little bit there. But are there other examples, you know, industry examples you could talk about how that's pulling in customers to standardize operations around Palantir? Thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, well, um, there are a lot of, like a lot of the new deals were working. So it's like, if you look at the timeline of Palantir, um, two years ago, it was all kind of, three years ago, it was like analytics and operations. And what you see now is kind of people building off of what, wanting a standardized, productized version of what we did at, at Airbus, what we've done internally at BP, uh, what, we, what we did at, with Lilium. Uh, and, um, uh, and so what I can tell you is like, of the very big deals we're working on now, they're almost all this. It's like, we used to have to educate people. They didn't believe us. Uh, and you know, it's interesting. I do think it's like, obviously, there was also just the COVID distribution thing. I mean, COVID distribution in England. England is not one healthcare system. It's 600 hospitals that are countries. It's like 600 countries. And, um, and this is true. And so, and so just seeing this happen or the networks of people hearing this happen is, is, is the reason why you have 80% organic growth in the U.S. X SPAC uh, and with almost no salespeople. It's because people are now like, okay. I, now, the, the caveat here is this is not for everybody. So there's like not everybody wants where this is particularly valuable is you have a business that is not protected uh, by a moat it, that has does, but has real insights on how to do something and wants to take over their industry. So it's like you're sitting there, you have a product that is maybe the best in the world, maybe the second best in the world, but it's, it's not protected. But you do have insights that are for software you could take over your market. And, and that's where we're seeing it. The, the, the thing that's really changed is for once, um, it's not me fighting my way into the person's office and then throwing me out. It's uh, them calling and saying, no, we know this can work. Uh, the pilot phases now are, are like days. Um, and then we're on, and so like, and we're working on two or three of these now. It's like, it's just, it's very, very exciting. The, the one thing I would say as a caveat though is, um, it's, it's a little bit, we are both working on this and working on modulization with equal force. Because like, and they're just not the same thing. Somebody who wants this is not buying modular Palantir. They want the whole foundry thing. And what they want us, what they want help with is like, well, uh, how would we identify people to hire to write to your platform? That's actually a big new question. Like, where can we find people? They don't have to be Palantir quality software engineers. Those, those are just too rare. But, you know, and what we're doing with our platform is making it so that just smart people can actually write to it. And so that, that, that increases our TAM a lot because smart and smart enough or specialized smart to write code at the level you write it here, those are just completely different TAMs.